I'm Brett Baer in Washington, and this is a Fox News alert. They are trying to pick up the pieces tonight on Wall Street after the Dow's worst day in four years. The industrial average plunged 531 points today. The S&P 500 lost 65. The Nasdaq dropped 171. For the week, the Dow and the S&P 500 both, both lost almost six percentage points. Nasdaq was down almost seven. Take a look at this chart showing the track of this week's Dow drop. And today was the biggest one day point loss since August 8th, 2011. Let's get some analysis now of what's going on. Joining us from our sister network, Fox Business Network's Melissa Francis. Good evening, Melissa. So what is driving this, uh, this sell off? There were a lot of different things at work today, and boy, it was a bloodbath into the close, I have to tell you. One of the biggest factors is China. As you know, they have made a move to devalue their currency, and that's bad for a lot of reasons. I mean, number one, you look at a company like Apple, which sold $16 billion worth of goods in China last quarter. They devalue that currency. That's an immediate hit to Apple's profits and their prices. All of a sudden, they're instantly with that, making less. It also gives you insight into what's going on in China. I mean, it's signals that the economy is really slowing there, that the government feels like they need to make a move like that and defend their economy. There's everything you see going on in Europe, in Greece. That's a drag as well. And there's oil. I mean, oil dipping below $40 a barrel. It should be good for consumers. We haven't really seen consumers go out and spend that money that they're saving. At the same time, oil dipping is bad for the market in companies like Exxon, which obviously makes their money in oil. And it tells you that the economy is slowing around the world if there isn't demand for the for oil. So there's a lot of things going on. The Fed minutes earlier this week as well, uh, indicating that the Fed is likely to come in and raise rates. R low rates and easy money have been a big boost to the market. So just a lot of things weighing on the market this week, and it was a rough one. Yeah, big question about what the Fed will do. But what about Monday? I mean, is the feeling that this is bear territory and it's going to keep uh, correcting? So I talked to traders after the close today to get their sense of what was going on. Some said that they felt like the bottom feeders hadn't come in. The people who come in and buy when prices are very low, they weren't necessarily there, and that made them feel like there could be more selling next week. But also you heard that they really want to wait and see and see what happens with Asia overnight on Sunday. Do they take our cue and continue the sell-off? That could spell trouble for the market on Monday. So I guess you have to stay up all night Sunday to find out, Brett. We'll be watching. Melissa, as always, thank all you. Right. We are still a few days away from the start of college football season, but there are expected to be more than 40,000 fans jammed into a stadium tonight in Alabama to see the man who has turned the Republican presidential race into a political contact sport. And Donald Trump is forcing his fellow candidates to play some serious defense. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Howard Kurtz looks at the disparity in media fortunes between Trump and Hillary Clinton. Catherine Harridge with new evidence that Clinton had classified information passed through her personal email server. But we begin with chief political correspondent Carl Cameron, Republicans trying to keep up with Trump on immigration, and it's tough. It is. Well, he has been in the race for a month and the front runner for the entire time. And now Donald Trump's singular emphasis on immigration is clearly impacting several rivals individually and the race overall. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker says he will not address any issues on immigration reform, like what to do with the 11 million immigrants already here illegally, until the border is secured. So what I've done is laid out what we need to do to secure the border and force the laws. Once we do that, then the president will have to work on whatever happens after that. Frontrunner Donald Trump plainly insists all illegal immigrants must be sent home. Walker tweeted for clarity, quote, truly secure border and enforce laws. Nothing else matters on immigration issue. If you don't do this first, that's my point. Rivals including Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, John Kasich, and others say some undocumented immigrants might be granted a path to legal status if they pay fines, have clean records, and wait in line. Lines will be long in Alabama for Trump tonight. 42,000 have RSVP'd for what would be a record crowd for any candidate in either party this year. Trump can appeal to both parties, having embraced socially and fiscally liberal positions over the years. In 2009, when the president signed a trillion-dollar economic stimulus package loathed by fiscal conservatives, Trump praised Obama and the deficit spending. I thought he did a terrific job tonight. I mean, it's a strong guy who really knows what he wants, and 
This is what we need. Ted Cruz wants to inherit Trump's supporters if the billionaire bows or flames out, and he heaps praise on the focus Trump has put on the border. Because of Donald Trump, all of the folks in the media are talking about illegal immigration. The second benefit of Donald Trump's being, being in the race is the attention it is drawing. Our national support doubled because those 24 million people, that many eyeballs watching the debate, they liked, I, I believe, the message they heard. Both Bobby Jindal and Jeb Bush addressed a Koch Brothers cattle call in Ohio today that will bring other candidates there this weekend. A smart immigration policy can make our country stronger. A dumb immigration policy will make our country weaker. Today, we've got a dumb immigration policy. Bush, more than once in recent days, has displayed his annoyance at questions about Trump and said he is not a conservative, but never mentioned Trump today. But 45 minutes from now, the Bush campaign says it plans to send an email to thousands of its supporters in Alabama that will say the following. For years, Donald Trump favored partial birth abortions. Trump proposed enacting the largest tax increase in American history. He's supported restrictions on the Second Amendment and has long backed laws that infringe on states' land rights. It goes on to say Trump's positions are deeply out of step with the Alabama way of life. We know Alabama cherishes life, especially the life of the unborn. Not a single Alabama taxpayer wants to see massive tax increases. Trump's history of supporting Democratic ideas will not go unnoticed in Alabama, so please share this with your friends. This again, an email going from the Bush campaign out to Alabama supporters. Trump has been throwing a lot of sharp elbows. Looks like Bush is getting ready to do so, too. Yeah, the happy tortoise, or whatever he called, maybe stepping it up a bit. We'll lace up the gloves. Okay, Carl, thank you. We have another glaring example tonight of exactly what Hillary Clinton is being investigated for. Here's Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge. In November 2009, as the U.S. government was finalizing its strategy for the drawdown in Afghanistan, aide Huma Abedin forwarded this email to Mrs. Clinton's personal account. The email, which contains the B-1 code for classified information, includes intelligence from Britain's Foreign Secretary David Miliband. Miliband's aide emphasized his boss, quote, very much wants the secretary only to see this note. And this code, 1.4B, means the information belonged to another government. It's the effort of a foreign government to communicate important information to us. It's classified in and of itself. This new evidence of classified information on Mrs. Clinton's personal email account comes as her team posted a video taking shots at her critics. When John Boehner tells you that Hillary Clinton is under criminal investigation for mishandling of classified emails, he's dead wrong. The two and a half minute video includes selective details from a Fox News report to buttress its claims Clinton did nothing wrong. One of the emails that the inspector general has flagged as potentially containing classified information at the time it was sent is actually one that if you look at it is specifically marked unclassified. Fallon omits that the inspector general concluded this 2011 Abedin email that triggered the FBI probe contained classified information when it was sent. And the video wrongly showcases an unclassified marking that was placed on the Abedin email in May when it was sent to Capitol Hill, not when it was drafted four years ago. Their comments concerning the markings is false and misleading. And while Mrs. Clinton maintained in March the server was under government protection, it had numerous safeguards. Uh, it was on property guarded by the Secret Service, and there were no security breaches. A spokesman for Denver's Platte River Network said they took control in June 2013 and moved the server to New Jersey. And this was a, an East Coast client, and we moved the server uh, to a dedicated secure data center. Did that in June of 2013, and it hadn't moved until Wednesday of last week, in which time we turned it over to the FBI per their request. For the second time this week, the Clinton campaign called a short notice conference call for reporters, this time claiming if Mrs. Clinton received classified information and the same emails were sent to the Benghazi Select Committee, then their com computers, rather, should be searched as well, Brett. Okay, Catherine, thank you. You're welcome. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have a lot in common. Both are obviously recognizable, rich. They both want to be president. But the ways in which they are going about it could not be more different. Fox News media analyst and host of Fox's Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz, takes a look. He's okay. been Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton both held news conferences this week, each with a strikingly different tone. Did you wipe the server? What, like with a cloth or something? No. You know how it works digitally. Did you try to wipe the whole thing? I don't know how it works digitally at all. You know, I read a lot of the phony reports, a couple of reports today in the paper saying, oh, well, 
you know, when Donald Trump gets tired of doing this, he's doing great, and he's leading all the polls, but at some point he'll get, I'm not going anywhere, folks. Since Trump got into the race on June 16th, he's done at least 66 national television interviews, blanketing the airwaves. Clinton has done two, with CNN and Univision. Thank you. Trump has taken questions from reporters at least six times during the same period. Clinton ended a long drought with 10. Trump's in such demand that he does most interviews from Trump Tower, many programs allowing him to phone in for as long as half an hour. This is extremely unusual for the Sunday shows where candidates are expected to show up. But on a single morning, Trump called in to meet the press, face the nation, this week and State of the Union. Trump, now on the cover of Time magazine, is good for ratings, and the media's appetite has only grown, with a poll showing him just six points behind Clinton. One similarity, both candidates can get testy with reporters. But Ed, you're, you're not listening to me. You keep bringing up negative. You only want to talk about negative. You're not bringing up anything new. You know, you're acting like you're the great reporter, blah, blah, blah. And while Clinton hasn't spoken to an English language network since July 7th, Trump does so much TV, he can clean up any mess the next day or just joke around with the hosts. Oh All right. I would pay you much more, Joe. Right. I would pay Mika so much more, your head would spin. <laughs> the, media, the media are feeding into this huge imbalance. But it also reflects the candidate's history. The former first lady has been wary of the press since her husband's scandal-scarred administration, while the real estate mogul used favorable coverage to turn himself into a reality show celebrity. Brett? Howie, thank you. Up next, taking Russia and Vladimir Putin a lot more seriously. First, here's what some of our Fox affiliates around the country are covering tonight. Fox 5 in Atlanta, where an anti-religion group is calling on the University of Georgia, Georgia Tech, and other schools to abolish the team chaplains for their football programs. The Freedom From Religion Foundation says Christian coaches and chaplains are converting playing fields into mission fields. WSVN in Miami, where they're keeping a close eye on Hurricane Danny, which has now been upgraded to a Category 3 hurricane. It's located, as you see, about 900 miles east of the Leeward Islands and is not posing a threat to any land yet, but you can see there its track could have it colliding with Puerto Rico by early next week. And this is a live look at New York. Fox 5 is covering breaking news there. There's a live helicopter shot. Police say two people have been shot outside a federal building in lower Manhattan. Local media are saying a federal officer and a suspect were wounded. It's believed it happened at the site of an immigration court. We'll monitor that. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.